unless you've been locked up in a time capsule of some kind, you probably have a good idea of what sexual harassment is. But that hasn't stopped it from occurring. Sexual harassment occurs when certain behaviors, gestures, words, or actions of a sexual nature are or become unwelcome. What's welcome or unwelcome is what makes this issue very complicated. I just always assume what's welcome to me is welcome to others, but I guess that's probably not a good gauge. No, you're right, it's not. While one person may not mind a stare or a whistle, another may. One person may appreciate an off-color joke and another may not. A suggestive picture or a poster may not offend one woman or guy, but it may another. While you can give a hug or a friendly kiss to one person, you may offend another if you do that. As I'm sure you know, there are two different types of sexual harassment. The first, quid pro quo harassment, is where a person in a position of authority, like a supervisor or a manager, threatens an employee with a demotion or even promises a promotion or some type of favor in return for a sexual favor. Now, if you have a boss that tells you you look great in a certain outfit, well, that's probably not sexual harassment. But if you have a boss that suggests that you become involved with him or her in a personal way as a way to get ahead or to keep your job secure, quid pro quo. It's the second type of harassment, hostile work environment, that is the far more common form of sexual harassment. The harasser can be you, your supervisor, coworker, vendor, or, or even a customer. Hostile environment sexual harassment exists when a person is subjected to sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, or some kind of visual, verbal, or physical conduct of a sexual nature that's unwelcome, or it's sufficiently severe or pervasive to affect the condition of the victim's employment and creates an abusive working environment. Now, what we'd like to do first is show some examples of, well, fairly common work situations where one person sees an action or behavior as unwelcome. The first we'll call artistic freedom. I walked by those pictures every day. I made a few remarks, you know, like, how tacky, a lot of good that did. I had to keep my girl covered up. Hey, DeVita, what do you think? Too little? Too much? It's too much, Sam. Way too much. I think so. Maybe next time I won't worry about covering so much up. <laughs> yeah. She never seemed to mind before. She was always looking at him and laughing. If it bothered her, I wish she would have said something. Okay. I don't even need to say in general on this one. None of us should have anything that's off color or of a sexual nature posted either on a bulletin board or on a wall or even on the screensaver on your computer. The woman, she let him know she didn't appreciate his sense of art but he just didn't want to hear it. That's a very good observation. The challenge each of us faces in stopping sexual harassment is to make the effort to notice and to look for what might be perceived by others as unwelcome, and then stopping whatever that action or behavior might be. The next vignette that we have for you is called, You Gotta Keep Trying. I said no. Now nicely at first, you know, I figured there's no need to hurt her feelings or anything. But then she asked again, so I thought maybe I was too friendly or something, so I said no again. This time though, not very nice. So what happens? I get cookies at home, then notes. Look at this one. I know that you like hockey. I have front row tickets for Saturday's playoff. I bet you won't be able to pass this one up. Let me know today. Hello, it's Lisa. Lisa, Brandon. Lisa, listen, I told you, no. Okay, I'm not interested. I already have a girlfriend, all right? But think about it, it's front row tickets. I'm not gonna take no for an answer. Why don't you think about it tonight and get in touch with me first thing in the morning, all right, bye. Lisa, Lisa. Brandon's just a nice guy. I thought we'd have a good time, no big deal. So he said no a few times. Harassing the guy? Now oh, that's just ridiculous. I don't think she's really harassing him either. Well, I know that would really bother me. You shouldn't have to feel uncomfortable like that at work. So, you don't want guys you meet through work to ask you on a date? Well, I don't mind that, but it's when they keep asking over and over and over. It's... You know, if a person asks for a date, it's most likely not sexual harassment. In fact, it happens all the time at work. The question of welcomeness enters in when a person asks for a date repeatedly after you have clearly and firmly stated you're not interested. Once that happens, the behavior certainly may constitute hostile work environment sexual harassment. Hmm. His first no to her should have been enough information for her to at least uh, question whether the behavior was welcome. 
Let's look at the jokes on you. They're vulgar and offensive. I know some people think I'm too straight and narrow, and I should just walk away or don't listen. Well, sometimes it's not so easy. Oh, good one. I like that. <laughs> I send that message because I just wanted to lighten things up in the office. I figured if it didn't bother me, then surely it wouldn't offend anyone else. Now, that sounds like what Stan said earlier. If I don't mind, they shouldn't mind, right? But that's the rule of thumb you really can't go by. Jokes, cartoons, or the ever-popular email jokes on your computer that are sexual in nature, they have no place in the workplace. And in fact, they may contribute to a hostile environment regardless of who sent them. I feel a little like a broken record here, but it's the impact on the person on the receiving end that determines sexual harassment, not our own intent or judgment of what's acceptable. And that's really important to remember. Intent is irrelevant. The impact on another person is the only thing that matters. So. I can say that's not what I intended till I'm blue in the face, but I'm still accountable for my behavior at work. Exactly. Next is the legend. Because other women here don't mind Ron's legendary bear hugs, doesn't mean it's okay with me. Jenny? Hi. How are you? Pretty good. How about you? Thank you look great. Thank you. Are you still dating that punk? Steve, you mean? Yep. You yep. betcha. Hey. I don't think so, buddy. Yeah. Hey, where's those tickets you keep promising me? Patience, my friend. Good things come to those who wait. Allie! Ron, how are you? Look how professional she is. Isn't she cute? Just give me a hug. A hug isn't going to make my day any better, Ron. A hug makes everybody's day better. Didn't your mama ever teach you that? All I ever hear is what a great guy I am. This gal doesn't want a hug, and now I can't hug anyone else? I just don't get it. I suppose that could be hostile environment, but it seems pretty harmless. Maybe. Although, it was fairly clear that the woman found the hug unwelcome. She clearly stated her preference by extending her hand. Then she says, A hug isn't going to make my day any better, Ron. These are the kinds of signals which each of us has the responsibility to acknowledge and respond to, even if we happen to disagree. The woman has clearly given notice that the behavior is unwelcome. If it were to continue, it could constitute hostile work environment sexual harassment. This next one, odd man out, is a little more difficult. No, he's never said anything even slightly rude to me or even asked me to do anything I was uncomfortable with. But Leslie really seems to be enjoying his attention. As a matter of fact, she's thriving in it. That's what makes me so mad. Hello. Your report looks good. I tabbed a couple updates and made a written comment on there for you. Oh, yeah. Now, there isn't anything you need me to do with this then? No, but I do need it by 3 o'clock tomorrow. Oh, no problem. Uh, anything else? No, thanks. Hi, Leslie. How you doing? Well, you look nice today. Why the suit? I'm going up to corporate this afternoon. You oh. look nice yourself. Hey, thanks. Anything I can take care of for you later? Uh, yeah. I was hoping you could go with me and sit in on the meeting. I thought it'd be a really good experience for you. Be great. Thanks. Uh, possibly catch some lunch on the way up there? It's a date. Do you have a quick second? I want to ask you a question. Well, sure. Okay, thanks. I happen to think Leslie's the most talented in the group. We get along great. I like her. So come on, tell me. That's sexual harassment? So we automatically assume the talented, attractive female is cashing in chips to get ahead? That is such a typical knee-jerk reaction. I can tell you right now, I have different relationships with different people, and that can be perceived as sexual harassment? If it could be established that a relationship is sexual in nature and puts one person in a position of an advantage over another employee, it very well could be quid pro quo sexual harassment against the disadvantaged employee. Remember, no one said this was easy or clear cut. The point is that whenever you manage people, it's important to treat them equally. Performance should be the only thing that's rewarded. But it looks like it was performance. Yet it also sounds like something else. It's something to be careful and concerned about. This is most likely not a case of sexual harassment, but there is certainly a perception here that needs to be dealt with. Let's see what you think about this, the contract. But here in her voice, the way she was talking to me, looking at me. I mean, I want the account, but at what cost to me? 
I think if you go with us, you're really going to be pleased. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're going to be getting top priority. Well, that's good to hear. So, um, tell me a little more. What else can I count on from you? Well, you know, everything that we've uh, overviewed. You know, I made sure it's all right here in the contract. <laughs> the contract, yeah. Well, tell me. Look, um, you know, we've really uh, had a good time tonight. And you know, I hope we can do more of this, just you and me. Well, um, yes, I I've really enjoyed getting to know more about your company, and uh, I'm sure my team and I will work really well with your group. Oh, the team, huh? <laughs> what about you and me? Don't you think, you know, we'll have fun together, huh? <laughs> uh, no, not at all. I, uh, I think we're going to work very well together. Well, let's talk about this contract a little more. Uh, what was it, a year's that, that you did? Uh, yeah, that's, that's correct. You know, I'm not quite sure I'm comfortable with that. I think we could develop this a little bit more, don't you? I made him uncomfortable? Well, that's a switch. Look, I was just making sure I was top priority. Nothing more, nothing less. I have been in that guy's shoes way too many times. That's so, I don't know, between the lines. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what can you really do with something like that? Well, he should document what happened and what was said. Now, if things continue to escalate or his sale becomes contingent upon a sexual relationship, he should talk to a supervisor. Employees have the right to a work environment free from sexual harassment, regardless of whether or not it's, it's a customer or even a vendor. But that's so hard with the customer is always yeah. right mentality. When it comes to harassment, the customer isn't always right. Next, we have Twisted Words. I work hard for what I get. I don't appreciate Jack implying it's something else that makes me successful. Me. Read it and weep. You got it. You got it. I closed it. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, no, it's amazing. Must have been a cunning stunt you pulled, or was it a stunning... <laughs> what? You're disgusting. Okay. Perhaps it was a little out there, but no big deal, right? Innuendos and suggestive comments are a big deal and could easily be part of what constitutes a hostile work environment for an employee. The short and sweet of it is, don't make suggestive comments, innuendos, or do anything else of a sexual nature at work. Let's look at whether or not equal appreciation applies. I know this sounds hypocritical. It is hypocritical. But it really depends on who's making the comment. I don't know, when she said it, it was weird. I did not like it. Damn, Janet, you look great. Those legs. How's it going, Connor? Oh, it's going, well, it's going much better now. As a matter of fact, I love you in pink. Hey, I gotta go. Thanks. Mm-mm-mm. I know the girl has no objection to being appreciated. She asks for it. I am just making note of what everyone else is. Hey, look. You can hardly say what she did was any worse than what he did. Both the male and female made an inappropriate comment of a sexual nature. They're both equally wrong for doing it and should immediately stop. One whistle or word or comment doesn't always constitute sexual harassment, but this vignette sure does illustrate the question of welcomeness. Well, you know, I could give you an example of two guys doing the same thing where one would really bug me and the other mm -hmm. one wouldn't bother yeah. me at all. So you're saying we should be equally bothered? That would help, but it's really just not realistic. Instead of being equally bothered, why not be equally respectful of others? Anything of a sexual nature is not appropriate in the work environment, no matter if it's welcome or not. That's a fact. And on the other hand, all of us have a responsibility not to leave ourselves open to comments or behavior of a sexual nature. Dressing in a short, short skirt or a seductive outfit can very well indicate to someone that behavior of a sexual nature may be welcome. Professionalism by everyone will go a long way in removing sexual harassment from the workplace. And then the question, everyone loves the compliment, or do they? I just kept feeling more and more uncomfortable with all the compliments. They made me feel weird. Did you just get your haircut? It looks great. <laughs> hey, Jay, that's a great color on you. Oh, it looks good. You really look pretty today. I love the dress. Did you know you look fantastic today? Thank you very much. I appreciate your help. Thanks. Hey, nice perfume. I like that. You're joking, right? I'm not the least bit attracted to Mandy. Hey, 
I was brought up to believe that men should tell women when they look nice. Are you joking? I mean, this guy just said nice things. No, giving compliments isn't generally sexual harassment, but we use this example because at the same time, it's clear to her, but not to him, that the compliments aren't welcome. In this case, the woman should consider telling the man in a respectful way that getting compliments makes her uncomfortable and that she'd like him to stop. Kind of thanks, but no thanks. Exactly. Yeah. This example shows us that harassment, more times than not, is a matter of perspective. One last example, testing the waters. It was very clear to me what he meant. I played along, pretended he meant something else, but I know he didn't. He knows he didn't. What am I supposed to do with that? Hey. Hey, come on in. Uh, close the door, will you? So, how'd we do? How'd it go this morning, Stevens? Went well. Went very well. They, uh, they jumped at the presentation, and um, okay. I think we'll hear something by the weekend. And I just wanted to take a minute and, and let you know what a terrific job I think you've done. Thank you. I, I'm really happy here. Works fun. Well, I, uh, I appreciate your honesty, and I certainly uh, appreciate your commitment. I, I just think we work well together. I think so, too, absolutely. I, I'm learning a lot from this whole experience. Well, I, I, I just wanted, to, wanted you to know how much... <coughs> I appreciate you. I mean, personally. Um, I'm learning a lot, a whole lot, and I really feel like I'm benefiting and, and, and growing, and so I thank you for that. I just uh, wanted to let you know what a terrific job I thought you were doing. Great, great, thank you. Um, <coughs> any, anything else? No, 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 that's all. That's okay. Oh, um, have Bob give me a call, just if you run into him. I honestly don't know what she's talking about. All of a sudden, she just got very cold and uh, distant. I, her performance is okay, but uh, that rapport is just gone. It could be quid pro quo sexual harassment. If it can be shown that this manager threatened the woman's position if she doesn't return or allow sexual advances. But in this case, it's more likely that he was just testing the waters to find out if she had any personal interest in him. And it seemed as if he was willing to back off if she didn't reciprocate. But the damage was done. This kind of testing or personal interaction can potentially destroy an otherwise excellent working relationship. Employees like this manager who have power over others' careers or performance should be particularly careful about how they interact with employees. Job-related results and performance are the only acceptable expectation. I have no intention or desire to harass anyone. And I also know that from watching these examples, I've probably crossed a line before with maybe a joke or even a comment. <laughs> Me too. There's got to be something more that we can do to help prevent it. There is. A very useful guideline to consider is, would you do or say the same thing in the exact same way if your wife, husband, son, daughter, or other loved one was standing right next to you? If not, don't do it at work. Second, is what you're doing potentially crossing a personal or physical boundary of another person, like touching? All of us have gotten a hug from a coworker that was well appreciated. But unless you really know a person well and have complete certainty that any kind of touching besides a handshake is welcome, don't do it at work. And last point to consider is has the person given you notice in any way? Did a coworker not laugh at a joke or even walk away? Did someone kind of squirm or pull back when you touched them? Did a coworker look nervous or flustered when you gave him or her a compliment? What about a negative remark about a picture, a poster, or even a cartoon that you have posted in your cubicle? So, what should I do if I get harassed? Well, the first thing to think about doing when you feel you're being harassed is to tell the person to stop. Some experts even say up to 90% of the time, this can stop it in its tracks. What if I don't feel comfortable telling the person to stop, or if I do tell them and they don't stop? It's likely a good time to get help from your employer. Follow your particular organization's grievance procedure. If you don't know what that procedure is, talk to your supervisor. If it's your supervisor that you feel is harassing you, then report it to his or her supervisor, someone in HR, or another person you feel comfortable with up the chain of command. I don't know. I've always felt kind of funny complaining about stuff like this, like it would jeopardize my career. 
Well, the first thing that each employee needs to know is that your organization won't and can't retaliate if you lodge a complaint. And in most cases, your complaint will be kept as confidential as possible, only involving those who are directly linked to the complaint. So everyone's not going to know. The bottom line, you can stop sexual harassment in the workplace. It's a matter of awareness. Awareness of what sexual harassment is. Not just the legal definitions, but the kinds of specific behaviors and actions that can create a hostile work environment and quid pro quo. It's a matter of perception. What one person perceives as acceptable behavior may not be to another. If you have any doubt about doing something, the answer is don't do it. And it's a matter of prevention. Prevention means not saying, doing, displaying, or sending anything that is sexually suggested in the workplace. Awareness, perception, and prevention. I walked by those pictures every day. I made a few remarks, you know, like how tacky, a lot of good that did. I had to keep my girl covered up. Hey, Davida, what do you think? Too little? Too much? It's too much, Sam. Way too much. Think so? Maybe next time I won't worry about covering so much up. <laughs> yeah. She never seemed to mind before. She was always looking at him and laughing. If it bothered her, I wish she would have said something. I know this sounds hypocritical. It is hypocritical. But it really depends on who's making the comments. I don't know, when she said it, it was weird. I did not like it. Damn, Janet, you look great. Those legs. How's it going, Connor? Oh, it's going, well, it's going much better now. As a matter of fact, I love you in pink. Hey, I gotta go. Peace. I know the girl has no objection to being appreciated. She asked for it. I am just making note of what everyone else is. I just kept feeling more and more uncomfortable with all the compliments. They made me feel weird. Did you just get your haircut? It looks great. Hey, Jay, that's a great color on you. Oh, it looks good. You really look pretty today. I love the dress. Did you know you look fantastic today? Thank you very much. I appreciate your help. Thanks. Hey, nice perfume. I like that. You're joking, right? I'm not the least bit attracted to Mandy. Hey, I was brought up to believe that men should tell women when they look nice. No, he's never said anything even slightly rude to me or even asked me to do anything I was uncomfortable with. But Leslie really seems to be enjoying his attention. As a matter of fact, she's thriving in it. That's what makes me so mad. Hello. Your report looks good. I tabbed a couple updates and made a written comment on there for you. Oh, yeah. Now, there isn't anything you need me to do with this then? No, but I do need it by 3 o'clock tomorrow. Oh, no problem. But anything else? No, thanks. Hi, Leslie. How you doing? Well, you look nice today. Why the suit? I'm going up to corporate this afternoon. You oh. look nice yourself. Hey, thanks. Anything I can take care of for you later? Uh, yeah, I was hoping you could go with me and sit in on the meeting. I thought it would be a really good experience for you. be great. Thanks. Uh, possibly catch some lunch on the way up there? It's a date. Do you have a quick second? I wanted to ask you a question. Well, sure. Okay, thanks. I happen to think Leslie's the most talented in the group. We get along great. I like her. So come on, tell me. That's sexual harassment? It was very clear to me what he meant. I played along, pretended he meant something else, but I know he didn't. He knows he didn't. What am I supposed to do with that? Hey. Hey, come on in. Uh, close the door, will you? So, how'd we do? How'd it go this morning, Stephen? Went well. Went very well. They, uh, they jumped at the presentation, and um, okay. I think we'll hear something by the weekend. Wow. And I just wanted to take a minute and, and let you know what a terrific job I think you've done. 
Thank you. I, I'm really happy here. Work's fun. Well, I, uh, I appreciate your honesty, and I certainly uh, appreciate your commitment. I, I just think we work well together. I think so, too, absolutely. I, I'm learning a lot from this whole experience. Well, I, I, I just wanted, to, wanted you to know how much <coughs> I appreciate you. I mean, personally. Um, I'm learning a lot, a whole lot, and I really feel like I'm benefiting and, and, and growing, and so I thank you for that. <laughs> I just uh, wanted to let you know what a terrific job I thought you were doing. Great, great, thank you. Um, any, anything else? No, 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 that's all. That's okay. Oh, um, have Bob give me a call, just if you run into him. I'll do that. Thanks. I honestly don't know what she's talking about. All of a sudden, she just got very cold and uh, distant. I, her performance is okay, but uh, that rapport is just gone. You could uh, hear it in her voice, the way she was talking to me, looking at me. I mean, I want the account, but at what cost to me? I think if you go with us, you're really going to be pleased. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're going to be getting top priority. Well, that's good to hear. So, um, tell me a little more. What else can I count on from you? Well, you know, everything that we've uh, overviewed. You know, I made sure it's all right here in the contract. <laughs> the contract, yeah. Well, tell me, look, um, you know, we've really uh, had a good time tonight, everybody, and I hope we can do more of this, just you and me. Well, um, yes, I, I've really enjoyed getting to know more about your company, and uh, I'm sure my team and I will work really well with your group. Oh, the team, huh? <laughs> what about you and me? Don't you think, you know, we'll have fun together, huh? <laughs> uh, no, not at all. I. Uh, I think we're going to work very well together. Well, let's talk about this contract a little more. Uh, what was it, a year is that what you did? Uh, yeah, that's, that's correct. You know, I'm not quite sure I'm comfortable with that. I think we could develop this a little bit more, don't you? I made him uncomfortable? Well, that's a switch. Look, I was just making sure I was top priority. Nothing more, nothing less. They're vulgar and offensive. I know some people think I'm too straight and narrow, and I should just walk away or don't listen. Well, sometimes it's not so easy. Oh, good one. I like that. <laughs> I send that message because I just wanted to lighten things up in the office. I figured if it didn't bother me, then surely it wouldn't offend anyone else. Just because other women here don't mind Ron's legendary bear hugs doesn't mean it's okay with me. Jenny? Hi. How are you? Pretty good. How about you? Thank you. look great. Thank you. Are you still dating that punk? Steve, you mean? Yep. You yep. betcha. Hey. I don't think so, buddy. Yeah. Hey, where's those tickets you keep promising me? Patience, my friend. Good things come to those who wait. Allie! Ron, how are you? Look how professional she is. Isn't she cute? Just give me a hug. A hug isn't going to make my day any better, Ron. A hug makes everybody's day better. Didn't your mama ever teach you that? All I ever hear is what a great guy I am. This gal doesn't want a hug, and now I can't hug anyone else? I just don't get it. I work hard for what I get. I don't appreciate Jack implying it's something else that makes me successful. Read it and weep. I closed it. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, no, it's amazing. Must have been a cunning stunt you pulled, or was it a stunning... <laughs> what? You're disgusting. Okay. Perhaps it was a little out there, but no big deal, right?
I said no. Now nicely at first, you know, I figured there's no need to hurt her feelings or anything. But then she asked again. So I thought maybe I was too friendly or something. So I said no again. This time though, not very nice. So what happens? I get cookies at home, then notes. Look at this one. I know that you like hockey. I have front row tickets for Saturday's playoff. I bet you won't be able to pass this one up. Let me know today. Hello, it's Lisa. Lisa, Brandon. Lisa, listen, I told you, no. Okay, I'm not interested. I already have a girlfriend, all right? But think about it. It's front row tickets. I'm not going to take no for an answer. Why don't you think about it tonight and get in touch with me first thing in the morning. All right, bye. Lisa, Lisa. Brandon's just a nice guy. I thought we'd have a good time. No big deal. So he said no a few times. Harassing the guy? Now that's just ridiculous.